What is a holding company and how does it work? Holding companies are designed to acquire equity in other companies. However, this is not the same as buying stock in another company. Equity ownership refers to ownership in a company even if that company does not issue stock. For example, joining two other partners in the ownership of a company makes you an equity owner, regardless of whether or not stock is issued. Stock owners are a type of equity owner. While holding companies can own assets that include stock, there are other types of equity, such as hedge funds, real estate and song rights. Holding companies deal with the ownership of almost anything of value in a business. The main reasons that business owners consider creating a holding company are to protect assets, reap tax benefits and have control or influence over other companies. Businesses owned entirely by holding companies can all be filed under the same tax return, saving time and money. The value of the holding company itself rises if the value of the stocks it owns in various businesses goes up. By having certain levels of equity in a business, the holding company can help dictate its direction and operations. A holding company maintains equity in an operating company, but if the holding company does not co-sign onto the operating company's debt, it is not responsible for that debt. This can shield assets from creditors. Assets are held by the holding company, which also helps shield those assets from lawsuits and debt liabilities. The holding company is only at risk of declines in worth and capital. Because the value of a holding company lies in protecting assets and influencing other businesses, there are only specific instances in which it is worth it to create a holding company. If you want to do so, begin by evaluating your current business needs. If you are concerned about asset protection, for example, a holding company may be of value. However, holding companies are often created for potential tax benefits. You can create an operating company and a holding company, both of which are different legal bodies, and shield the holding company from the debt of the operating company. To create your holding company, you register it in a state and provide your business name, articles of incorporation and the name of the business agent managing the operating and holding company. If you so choose, you can be the agent for both the operating and holding company. Your articles of incorporation outline the purpose of your company, list its officers and specify the method by which business-related decisions will be made. You also need to create a bank account that is unique and specific to your holding company. The operating and holding companies must use separate bank accounts and keep track of their bank records separately. The wealth that your company generates is deposited with the holding company, rather than the operating company. This money can then be lent to the operating company as needed. If your operating company is already in existence at the time that you started your holding company, you can sell your operating company's assets to the holding company to protect them. To grow and diversify the portfolio of your holding company, you may end up choosing to invest in or acquire tangible or intangible equity in other businesses as opportunities arise. When considering your investment choices or certain business opportunities, such as a holding company, you need to fully understand the differences between a registered and unregistered company. All holding companies must apply with the office of the controller of the currency and face higher tax rates than many other types of corporations. However, a registered holding company must adhere to much stricter regulatory requirements as set forth by Congress and regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. A holding company is an organization that has control over another company or several other companies. Usually the management team or owners of the holding company purchase a majority interest in the other companies by buying a majority of the public shares available. In some cases, the company may purchase other businesses outright. The sole purpose of this type of organization is to oversee the management of firms it owns. Holding companies are frequently referred to as personal holding companies, bank holding companies, thrift companies or conglomerates. Public companies, corporations that sell shares of common stock to the public, must register and file with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Any holding company with more than $10 million in assets or more than 500 owners must file quarterly, annual and other statements with the SEC. Assets include the ownership interests that the holding company possesses in the other companies it holds. Any holding company that offers its own stock for sale to the public must also file under the Investment Company Act of 1940. The SEC reviews these statements to make sure that the financial misstatements are as accurate as possible, with little to no misstatements, and that the company is accurately reporting information to its shareholders. 
Holding companies that do not sell stock to the public are not required to register with the SEC or file financial reports. The SEC does require a majority of holding companies to register, subsequent to the Investment Company Act of 1940. Personal holding companies are frequently the most common types of unregistered holding companies. The primary legal differences between a registered and unregistered holding company are the SEC compliance regulations to which a registered company must adhere. A registered holding company must comply with generally accepted accounting principles and file its financial reports with the SEC. It must publicly disclose any pertinent information that may affect the financial health or status of the company, such as pending lawsuits, negligent management and reasons for purchases or sales of its subsidiaries. In some cases, a holding company, dependent upon the main purpose of the entity, may be required to employ certain financial and legal personnel to appropriately oversee its acquisitions. A holding company is a business entity that has no operations and does not conduct any activities. It owns assets. These assets could be shares of other companies, hedge funds, real estate, trademarks, patents or units in partnerships. Grouping companies together under a holding company gives them advantages they would not have when operating as separate entities. Subsidiaries are protected from problems occurring in other companies. A plaintiff who wins a judgment against one subsidiary cannot attach the assets of the other companies. The holding company would also not be liable if it had not guaranteed the debts of the subsidiary. If a subsidiary takes a risk and fails or goes into bankruptcy, the loss will not affect the holding company. It can simply sell its shares in the failed subsidiary. If the holding company files a consolidated tax return, the losses incurred in a subsidiary can be offset against the profits of the other subsidiaries. The net result is a lower tax bill for all the companies as a group. Generally, subsidiaries can pay dividends to the holding company without creating a tax liability. After the holding company receives the cash, disbursements could be allocated to the stockholders of the holding company or to better investment opportunities in the other subsidiaries. The holding company may have special skills and know how that could be used to further advantage in other subsidiaries to increase their value. One subsidiary could have customer relationships that would benefit the related companies by expanding their sales. The combined financial strength of the group might be used to obtain more favorable financing terms than if the subsidiaries were standing on their own. Subsidiaries in the same industry could combine their buying power to extract better prices from vendors and better credit terms. Pooling together the fiscal resources of the holding company and its subsidiaries will enable the company to take on large-scale projects. Creating a holding company allows the firm to control more businesses with smaller amounts of capital. A holding company could obtain control of a company by acquiring 51% of its stock. In some cases, it could be possible to assume control by purchasing only 25% of a company when ownership is diverse, and this purchase would make the holding company the largest shareholder. Not having to purchase 100% of a corporation enables a small business owner to control more companies with smaller investments. Setting up a holding company is an excellent way for a small business owner to diversify his operations without taking unnecessary risks. Combining the resources of a holding company and its subsidiaries creates synergies in purchasing power, financing terms and the ability to invest in larger projects.